Hello, welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so happy that you and some of your pets are joining us today. You know, at National Geographic, we know that the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling can change the world. And this Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students from all over the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. And today, our Explorer is Juan Mayorga. Juan is a marine data scientist, which means that he collects and wrangles and analyzes a lot of information to study and help protect the ocean. To do this, he uses tools like cameras, satellites, and other earth monitoring technologies to explore how serious ocean problems are and then works with groups of people to solve the problems. But before we get into today's lesson, let's welcome all the registered friends joining us from across the United States, Canada, and the globe. We'd like to give a shout out to Wolf Ridge Elementary, Ms. Quick's class, Connections, Ms. Stanley's students, St. Luke School, Ms. Alvarez's kids, Luis Real School, Idea, T.A. Thompson, Ms. McLaughlin's class at Wolf Ridge Elementary, the Dawa Home School, St. Luke School, Milovije Borovic, St. Stephen and St. Agnes School, the Barn House School, and Northside Community School. And all of our friends on YouTube, we're so glad to have you all here. And with that, let's get Explorer Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to Juan to share all about protecting our ocean. Take it away, Juan. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, and thanks everyone for being here today. I'm going to share my screen for a little bit uh, and share about my passion in my work for protecting the oceans. And then we go into questions and answers uh, with you all. So give me a thumbs up if this is uh, displaying well. Okay, great. Um, so my name is uh, Juan Mayorga and uh, to get started, I would like to ask everyone uh, to please uh, close your eyes for a couple of seconds. Um, and if you have been in the ocean before and were able to see under the waves, uh, think about what you saw. And if you haven't been in the ocean yet, try and imagine what you would like that first encounter to look like. You know, think a little bit about the colors that you would like to see. Um, about the water, uh, its temperature, uh, is it clear? Uh, and think a little bit about the animals that you would like to see. Are they big? Are they small? Uh, are there a lot of them? Now open your eyes and the, the picture in your head look anything like this. Now, if it did, that is great because this is what the ocean should look like. An ocean full of life, an ocean full of color, and filled with animals of all shapes and sizes, from the little fish you see in yellow to the big, big sharks. Now, maybe a lot of you are thinking, wow, that is a lot of sharks. This is very scary. There's no way I would get in the water here. But what's actually scary is a world without sharks. Because think about it, if there are no sharks, means there's not enough food to feed them. And if there's not enough to feed them, there isn't enough food to feed us. And millions and millions of people around the world depend on the oceans and the fish from the sea for their food. Now sharks hold a very special place in my heart. When I was about uh, your guys' age, I was obsessed with uh, dinosaurs. I knew <clears throat> all of the names. I knew what they ate, how big they were. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I knew everything about them. And I remember one day um, reading about how sharks and dinosaurs used to live together. Dino sharks are as old as dinosaurs and they survived the mass extinction that killed the dinosaurs. So that automatically became an obsession for me. And I became super, super excited about studying and trying to protect these animals. 
And I have been very fortunate for the last five or six years of my life to work with a team from National Geographic on a project called Pristine Seas. And this project brings together people with very different backgrounds, uh, filmmakers, photographers, engineers, scientists, uh, policy experts, all with uh, a deep passion for protecting the ocean and some of its most wild and magical places left. You might be wondering, well, what are these places look like? So all of these places, the places that are best conserved around the world, all have in common the presence of predators. In the last photo, we had sharks. In this one, we have sea lions. Uh, sometimes it, it is other big fish, like this big, big grouper that we see here. And sometimes it's other big predators that perhaps you didn't think of as marine, such as these polar bears. But they do, in fact, depend a lot on the healthy marine ecosystems to survive. And predators are so important because they uh, keep everything else in check. They are at the top of the food chain. And if they're doing well, everything else is doing well. All of these places around the world, they don't look the same. Some are Arctic ecosystems like this one. Others look more like my screen freeze. Oh, others look more like uh, magical underwater forests, like this kelp forest uh, that uh, is in cooler waters, like in California, for instance, or in the southern part of Chile and Argentina. And others look like the beautiful, colorful coral reefs that we all uh, love and have seen, for example, on Finding Nemo. But one thing that they all have in common is this just crazy diversity of life forms, colors, and an abundance of life seen nowhere else uh, in our oceans. Now, you might be wondering, where are these places? Uh, here in this map are the 32 different places that our team at Pristine Seas has visited over the past 12 years. You, you can see that they are everywhere. There are some in the Arctic Ocean, some are in the uh, middle of the Atlantic, in the middle of the Pacific. So they are really everywhere, but there are not that many. And you'll see here that uh, there are two colors uh, in these areas. Uh, and the green ones are places that uh, are now protected from destructive industrial activities like mining or like industrial fishing. Because we not only just go to these places and take pretty pictures of them, the trick and the real mission is to try and protect them. Why? <clears throat> because these places, they are like stepping into a time machine. These are places that take us back to uh, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, and show us what the oceans used to look like before we humans started impacting them. Um, and they remind us of what uh, we have lost, but also of what the future could look like if we started to be more conscious and started protecting a little bit more of the ocean. And we also need to protect them because they are the ocean's finest work of art. And in the same way that we protect human art in museums, uh, we should be protecting these places in the ocean. Now, how do we do this? How do we protect these places? We do it through a combination of expeditions uh, and science in media, uh, media being the, the great films that I'm sure a lot of you have seen on the National Geographic Channel. Uh, we do this through policy, working with governments and with the local communities that live in these places, because these communities are the custodians, the people that have been taking care of these places. And we do it through education through educating and inspiring and raising awareness in the young leaders of the future. Uh, and today I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail into this expeditions and science part, which I think is the most exciting. So uh, in our work, we take ships like this to some of these remote, very far away places. Uh, this is one of our favorite, it's called the Argo. Uh, it's got the friendliest, the friendliest crew and it fits about 15 scientists. 
uh, on our team. And on this ship, we have a bunch of different toys and exploration tools that allow us to measure and quantify and estimate the health of the ecosystem from the surface to all the way down to the very, to the most uh, deep parts in the ocean. So I wanna walk you through a little bit of all of these toys and tools that we have. So to explore the first 50 meters of the ocean, we can strap air tanks on our backs, right? I, I think most of you probably have, have seen some of these. And we go and we swim uh, alongside the reefs or alongside these places, and we go counting uh, the number of fish that we see, how big they are. Uh, we also count the, what we see on the seafloor, if we see a lot of corals or if we see algae or uh, archings. And we do this to uh, estimate the health of the seafloor as well. Now, in addition to swimming and counting uh, animals and, and, uh, and uh, the, on the seafloor, we also employ other tools such as these uh, baited cameras. So these are, you know, kind of like aluminum metal frames that have two cameras, two GoPros attached to it. And then at the, at the front, there is this white can that has bait. It has basically tuna, pieces of tuna and bait to attract uh, fish. And we do this because uh, some of these are, some of these fish, especially the predators like sharks are pretty shy of humans. So when we go out there swimming and trying to count them, we don't really see them. So we need to use some of these tools to actually estimate if they are around. And we also have a similar uh, type of, of, of tool that helps us do this in the open waters. Because in the open water, in the middle of, uh, you know, the middle of the ocean, we have other types of animals, such as this very curious blue shark that gets attracted again by the, this bait that we put in front of the cameras and they get close and we can uh, estimate and count the different types of species that are living in these uh, ecosystems. Uh, now, if you wanted to go deeper than 50 meters, uh, we can't strap a normal tank of air on our backs. So we have specialized people that uh, use different types of tanks filled with different types of gases that allow them to go down up to 100 meters. And down there, you know, the light is not, it's not very bright and it gets really, really, really cold. Uh, but this allows us to see firsthand some of these deeper ecosystems that are in our uh, world's oceans. Uh, but we don't stop there, we keep going down. And to go from 100 meters to 500 meters, we have this uh, incredible toy, it's a submersible, that can take three people down on this sphere of glass. You basically get this, uh, this 360 degree view um, of the ocean as you go down. Uh, it's, so this is what this um, submarine, submersible looks like. Uh, you see it going down here. Uh, it's at the beginning, it is this beautiful, beautiful blue, and it starts getting darker and darker and darker until we reach the bottom of the seafloor uh, where there's no, no light at all, and we have to turn our lights on. Um, so this is us going down on a recent expedition in Malpelo. It was extremely, extremely, extremely exciting to go down there. You might be wondering, well, what do you see when you go down there? For example, we see fish, uh, things like this. This is called the monster of Malpelo. Uh, and it's a ragged tooth sand tiger shark. It's a really, really rare species of shark that likes to live uh, in the deep ocean and hang out there. It's also one of the uh, most threatened species of sharks out there. Um, you know, sharks take a long time to be old enough to have babies, uh, and therefore they are very vulnerable to fishing. Their populations are very vulnerable. So this is one of the beauties that we can see down there at those, at those depths. And below 500 meters, 
again, we don't stop there. Uh, from 500 meters all the way to the 7,000 meters, and there should be another zero there, I'm sorry, but all the way down to the deepest depths of the ocean, 7,000 meters, we have uh, some of these cameras called drop cams. And these are cameras that are inside uh, a glass sphere filled with air that we program to go to a certain depth, you know, and record there for three, four, five, six hours, and then come uh, automatically to the surface when the time um, is done. And then we go, we pick it up, and we analyze all of the video uh, that it captures, and we count and we and we identify the types of species that we see. So we have applied all of these. Uh, combination of tools uh, and toys, exploration and science toys, and all of these places around the world. And uh, we have helped protect about 6 million square kilometers of the ocean, which is, sounds a lot, but it really isn't. Only 4% of our planet is protected. Uh, it, it, the remaining 96% continues to be open to fishing and other industrial activities. And our work and uh, of other scientists as well suggests that we need at least 30% of the planet protected, not only for biodiversity, but also for ourselves. Uh, and then one last thing that I wanted to point out is that our work doesn't stop at protecting these places, right? We need to ensure that these places remain protected, that they are managed right and that the people around them care about them so one of the things that we do uh, one of the things that i specialize on is on using technology especially satellites uh, to see if these places are having uh, illegal fishing for instance so uh, with satellites and this is what i'm gonna, this animation that you're seeing here each little light in the ocean it's an industrial fishing boat that we can track using satellites. And we know the when and the where and what type of fishing these boats are doing. And we can, we can do this in, in near real time um, and inform authorities if we see things that are, uh, shouldn't be happening in certain areas. And thanks to uh, artificial intelligence and you know, these new technologies that are uh, enabling things like self-driving cars, we can also tell what type of boats are, are fishing. So not, not only when and where, but what types. Um, so here are just three examples of three different um, fishing boats. Let's see if this is going to play right. Yeah, right. So, so the blue one, it's a boat that uh, use, it's called a persinger. And th those boats use just gigantic nets and they go around and they capture entire schools of tuna. And we can see uh, the patterns and how they move and we can actually tell uh, what they're doing, where they came from and where they're going. The one in green, for example, is a different kind of boat that's called a long liner. Uh, and they use uh, lines uh, kilometers long filled with hooks and they target other types of fish like sailfish, um, billfish and a lot of sharks actually also end up in those in those hooks and the one in red uh, are bottom trawlers type perhaps one of the most damaging activities out there in the ocean uh, where boats um, drag a big big gigantic net all over the seafloor uh, scraping everything on its path so um, yeah, we have all of these technologies now that help us make sure that these places stay protected and are part of the work that we do at Pristine Seas. Uh, I think that with that, I'm going to end. Uh, well, here's this, this uh, one last um, snapshot of what a protected area looks like from these satellites. So this red square is a protected area. And everything else that you see outside, these little green squares, that is the measuring uh, fishing. So you can see with these satellites that the protected area is actually being respected by fishermen. And we can do this every day, every day to make sure that it stays like this. Um, so this is a quick summary and overview of some of the science that we do at Pristine Seas to uh, protect some of the most 
magical and wild places in the ocean. Uh, and with that, I'll just open it up for questions from all of you. Juan, I want to ask a question on behalf of all of us. How can we join your miss mission with the Pristine Seas Group and protect the ocean? Uh, yeah, I, I want to say that, you know, we all can help from whatever we, we are. Like me, for one, I grew up in uh, Bogota, Colombia, in the middle of the mountain, the Andes mountain range. So really, really far away from the ocean. But today, I, you know, I work to help try to save it. So one uh, message I'd like to uh, share with you all is it doesn't matter where you are in the world. We, if you are passionate and you wanna help, there's, there's no one or nothing that really can uh, stand in your way. Now, what do you all can do to help? Well, one thing is to continue getting educated and continue learning, uh, remain curious, remain asking questions and talk about it with your friends, talk about it with your families. Because one of the things that happens in the ocean is that people sometimes just don't even think about it, right? And if we don't think about it, if we don't see it, we don't talk about it, uh, you know, things are not going to change. So that is one very easy thing we can do. Another thing that you can help us do in this fight to protect our oceans is to uh, think about the kind of fish you're eating, right? And try to fish, uh, try to eat uh, things that are as uh, sustainable as possible. Things that were caught uh, near your hometown, perhaps, uh, with fishermen that you know, or fishermen that you trust. Uh, and if you're not near the coast, there are also uh, apps on your phone that you can ask your parents to download that, you know, when you go shopping, they, it, it, they can tell you if the fish you're about to buy is a good option or perhaps to avoid it. Um, so those are two things that I think uh, we can all do that will go a long way in helping us in this fight. Well, Juan, thank you so much for your time today and for your lesson. No, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. And thank you to all of the students and the teachers out there for joining us. I hope that you join many more of our events. You know, next week at this day and time, we'll be back. We're gonna learn all about echolocation in bats with explorer Yossi Yovel. And the week after that, we're gonna learn all about honeybees with Melanie Kirby. We've also got a lot of amazing and free resources at our National Geographic Education website. So please check us out. We are here to support you. Have a great day, everyone. Stay curious, keep exploring,